Hey, welcome to Mickey J White Hat. One of my subscribers has sent me an interesting puzzle. He saw the last video on the JPEG that was really an XE and thought he'd sent me a challenge. So I received a JPEG image in the email and the instructions were, this is a virus, prove it. So let's prove it. been sent a JPEG file of two, 323 kilobytes, quite small, what you'd expect. Let's have a look, thumbnail looks intact, Game of Thrones, very topical. Let's uh, open it up, there we go, Game of Thrones. Looks like a, a normal image file to me. So, what's going on here? Why is this so weird? Let's open up with Ghidra. Drag the file into Ghidra, and, ooh, doesn't know what it is. So, let's go into the types of languages that it supports. And let's tell it that it's X32, probably to call it video, uh, Visual Studio, um, X86, sorry, and open it up. Right, let's now go into the actual file. So if we right click and go to open with code browser, and it opens up in Ghidra. And yes, we do all the standard analysis, see what we can find out. First of all, it's of type JPEG. The magic byte says JPEG, and it's got an image in there. So far, this looks like an image file. I can't see anything in it. There's no functions in it. Well, that's an image file. There's no exports. There's no imports. Um, I can't see anything here that even looks slightly suspicious. It looks like just an image file. I'm surprised Ghidra even knew what to do with it. And I was scrolling through it. It's not very large. There's not a lot in here. Um, I'm at a loss to see what else I can find. How about we load it up to virus total? So we've loaded, ooh, hang on, it's got a virus in it. It's a JPEG file, yeah, that's fair enough. But it's detected as all these viruses. Hmm, okay, it's even got the JPEG icon. Okay, so this is a challenge after all. Let's have a look at the details. So, yeah, it called it a JPEG. They even got the file type JPEG there. Mime type is JPEG image. It's even got the color standards, everything there. It's even got the resolution, image size. It's even got the decoding method used to view it. As far as I can tell, this is a JPEG file. So let's sign in, shall we? Let's actually run the little graph here. Um, yeah, nothing to say it's not a JPEG. It still looks like an image file to me. So why is this malicious? We've opened it up now with Notepad++. It's got a J5 header. That all looks normal. Well, if it's got something malicious in it, it probably has an exe file. So let's search for exe, shall we? Wow, here we go. We've got an exe file in a JPEG. That's a bit unusual. Okay, well, why is that? Let's have a closer look here. Hey, look, it's got a PK header on there. That's a, a WinZip or a PK zip uh, file. Let's have a bit more of a closer look at this, shall we? It's going to rename this to .zip. A bit unusual, I know. And extract the file out here where I am. Eee, there we go. We've got an exe file that just popped out. Up through virus total. <laughs> okay. Yeah, look, there's a virus there, okay. There's a virus hiding in this image file. How interesting. It's a PEXE file. Hmm, okay. Let's see what else we can find out and load this up into Ghidra. And this time, it's not an image file. This time it detects it correctly as an x86. And it's going to import the file. Interesting. Here I was thinking that uh, this was an image file, but I've been proved wrong. This is why it's always a good thing to not trust the files you're given. Always look into them and see what they are. This was somebody who gave me the heads up, this is a virus, but it could have just come anonymously and I wouldn't have known. So let's go and have a bit of a look and open this with Code Browser. Up comes Ghidra. Here we go. You can see straight away that we've got the Magic Byte MZ header there. You can also see that under the segments, there's not enough. It doesn't quite look like a real exe file. 
something's not quite right with this file. Hmm. You can have a look through the resources. Um, let's have a look at the imports. We've just got the one import. It's a bit unusual as well. There's normally more imports than that. Exports. There's not a lot going on there either. It just returns the function and pops back out to the interface. Let's have a look under functions. Normally there'd be quite a few functions. We've only got one function. That's not normal. There's something wrong with this exe file. It's hiding something. It's somehow ossificated. Something's going on here. Right, I'm at a loss now where to look. I know there's something wrong, but where is it? Hmm, we've got some strange things here. Um, not quite confident that I know where to look. Um, it's definitely not enough segments. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like a real exe. Let's search for some ASCII strings, shall we? Let's see what's in this. Okay, some gibberish, 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 gibberish. We've got some version numbers. What the heck? We've got some really weird text here. Really weird text. Disable, debacle. Okay, custodial buddy. Carol alive, copy can cannons. This actually looks like some kind of a weird dictionary bestiality back okay this is really odd army cracker buyer's blood sport we've just got some really unusual words in here maybe this is to throw off anybody pulling the file apart we've got an assembly version there we've got a product version so someone's gone the trouble of making this look like a real exe file and they've filled it with some very unusual words and yet, all these words don't appear in any functions. When we tried to pull apart the functions, there was the one function, and it just returned to the command line, basically. We've got a TCP IP listener here. I think this is beyond what I'm going to find in Ghidra. So, I don't think there's anything else I can do. I can try maybe graphing, but I'm not sure. Let's have a look at a graph, shall we? It doesn't do a heck of a lot. In fact, it looks like this XE is in somehow, some way broken. Um, which I guess it could be compressed or packed. There's something quite not right here. Um, I don't think I'm going to get anything else out of Ghidra. Let's go into CFF Explorer. See if we can get any other information out of this. So if we go into the file header, go into the characteristics, I can see it's an executable, it's 32-bit. No surprises there. Nothing under optional headers, section headers. It's looking very basic. Let's have a look at the resources. Um, you've got what I expect to see, which are the, basically the icons and things. Nothing unusual there. I've got one thing redirecting in memory. That's about it. Um, I've got, oh wow, more unusual looking patterns there. Uh, strings, probably the same strings we saw before in Ghidra, all whacked in there, uh, a bit unusual, hmm, I don't think I'm getting anything extra out of this, um, let's just keep poking around, we'll see if we find anything else, yeah, I don't think, there's only one dependency, which is very unusual, um, Really, there's not a lot in here. Again, we can go up the icons, look around, but not much to look at. Let's have a look at Resource Hacker. So this recognizes it's a real executable, which is a good start. Um, we can see the icons. We can also see some of the copyright information. Disables, debacles, bracketing.exe. Hmm, I'll have to Google that later. A bit strange. Then we've got all the icons and things like that. It treats it like a real exe, but there's not much information about it, really. So let's pump it through PEID. It's not compressed. It's compiled with Visual C plus basic.net. Maybe we could use a .NET decompiler. We do have some of those at our disposal. Pop it in a hybrid analysis. Let's find out what's going on here. This will tell us what's really happening. Okay. I consent. I'm not a robot. And let's continue. And I don't care. The standard operating system is fine. 
Right, yeah, we know it's a virus. We know that. It's in the queue. We know it's a virus. What virus is it? What's it doing? Because there's something funny about this header. Right, let's go into that and have a bit of a look. Okay. Uh, contains the ability to look into your RDP. Okay, remote desktop, fair enough. So look at the MITRE attack. That might be interesting. So we've got, it hooks into the system, it does process ejecting, does dumping of credentials, queries the registry, got remote desktop. Hmm, okay, looks quite malicious actually. Let's have a bit more of a scroll down here. Um, what's going to be of interest to us today? Probably the URLs will be interesting. Um, okay, it doesn't show us the URLs there, they'll show us a bit further down. So let's keep scrolling. All right. Everybody's telling me it's a virus. Come on, tell me what's going on. It's got some anti-reverse engineering traits. It also says it's got an unusual PE header. So there you go, I called that one. And as we look a bit further, it's going off to all these websites. Interesting. Binarycashbackdaily.com. Interesting. It posts to a web server, reads configuration files, sends traffic on HTTP, sending it to port 80 and quite a few, few places, really. It's interesting. Reads terminal keys for registry, checks on FTP clients. Wow, this thing goes crazy. And we've also got a number of reports it listens on. Um, here's the actual picture of the header itself and what's in there. Um, I can see that it's 70% uh, XE. It's a bit strange, though. It doesn't interact with the desktop. It doesn't do much more than play with its own file. But here's all the domains it goes to, all the contacted hosts it goes to. Jumps around all over the place. It even goes to Australia and off to the US. And then, of course, there's those crazy strings that I extracted before. So, what else do we got here? Wow. Well, again, I'll put this in the description so you can have a bit of a play with it. But what do you think? An image with an XE in it, hey? Who would have thought? So that's one level up on the video I just previously did. So, don't trust your files. Now, if you like this, just like this person did, you can get me a sample. I can pull it apart and have a look. So if you like it, leave me a comment. Tell me what you'd like me to do. And obviously, I'd love for you to give me the thumbs up and to subscribe ring the bell and share this on your Twitter and Facebook and things like that. Right, well, it's a late night here, so I'm going to call it a night. So you have a good night too.